good morning students our today's topic is human health and diseases under that from ringworms page number 149 disease is ringworm and it is caused by the fungi which belongs to the genera microsporum or trichophyton or epidermophyton it is a common most common infectious disease in man appearance of dry scaly lesions on various parts of the body such as skin nails and scalp are the main symptoms of the disease these lesions are accompanied by intense itching heat and moisture help these fungi to grow which makes them thrive in skin fold such as groin or between the toes groin means in where the sex organs are present ring worms are generally acquired from soil or by using towels clothes or even the comb of infected individuals maintenance of personal and public hygiene is very important for prevention and control of many infectious diseases measures for personal hygiene include keeping the body clean consumption of clean drinking water food vegetables fruits etc public hygiene includes proper disposal of waste and excreta periodic cleaning and disinfection of water resources pools cesspool cesspool is the underground tank where fecal matter is stored and observing standard practices of hygiene in public catering these measures are particularly essential where the infectious agents are transmitted through food and water such as typhoid amoebiasis and ascaris ascaris is caused by the round worm in cases of airborne diseases such as pneumonia and common cold in addition to the above measures close contact with the infected person or their belonging should be avoided for diseases such as malaria and filariasis that are transmitted through insect vectors the most important me- measure is to control or eliminate the vectors and their breeding places this can be achieved by avoiding stagnation stagnation of water in and around residential areas regular cleaning of household coolers use of mosquito nets introducing fishes like gambusia learn this the name of the fish which is used to because gambusia eat the larva of the mosquitoes in ponds that feed on mosquito larva spraying of insecticides in ditches drainage areas and swamps in addition doors and windows should be provided with wire mesh to prevent the entry of mosquitoes such precautions have become all the more important especially in the light of re- recent widespread incidences of vector borne diseases like dengue and chikungunya in many parts of india the advancements made in biological science have armed us to effectively deal with many infectious diseases the use of vaccine and immunization programs have enabled us to completely eradicate a deadly disease like smallpox a large number of other infectious diseases like polio diphtheria pneumonia and tetanus have been controlled to a large extent by the use of vaccines biotechnology is at the verge of making available newer and safer vaccines discovery of antibiotics and various other drugs has also enabled us to infect to effectively treat infectious diseases now what is immunity already we are exposed to large number of infectious agents have however only a few of these 
exposure results in disease why this is due to the fact that the body is able to defend itself from most of these foreign agents so what is immunity this is the overall ability of the host to fight the disease causing organism so it is the inner ability of the organism to the to fight with the disease causing organism and this property of our immune system is known as immunity immunity can be of two types innate immunity and acquired immunity innate means which is present in our body from the time of birth itself innate innate is present in our body from the time of birth itself acquired immunity that we acquire during our lifetime when our body comes in contact with the pathogen so this is acquired again innate immunity innate immunity is non specific type of defense that is in general that is in general immunity of our body it is innate immunity present from the at the time of birth this is accompanied by providing different types of barriers to the entry of the foreign agents into our body innate immunity consists of four types of barriers in our body some barriers are present starting from the birth which prevents us from the various diseases like physical barriers physiological barriers cellular barriers and cytokine barriers first is physical barrier skin on our body is the main barrier which prevents entry of the microorganisms mucus coating of the epithelium lining of the respiratory gastrointestinal gastrointestinal means digestive and urogenital tract that is urinary uh, that is a uh, urinary excretory system also help in trapping microbes entering our body physiological barriers acid physiological barrier means which functioning which according to the functioning in our body some barriers are there like acid in the stomach saliva in the mouth tears from the uh, our eyes these are the physiological because of their functioning they prevent the growth of microbes next is cellular barriers means certain cells are present in our body in the wbcs are present that is leukocytes are present certain types of leukocytes are present like pmnl that is a type of neutrophil full form is polymorpho nuclear leukocyte and certain monocytes there are natural killers in the blood as well as macrophages in tissue can phagocytos phagocytos means can eat the germs and destroy microbes so certain cells are present in our body in wbc neutrophils macrophages etc which kills the germs these cells are present from the birth itself cytokine barrier virus infected cells secrete certain proteins called as interferons which protect the non infected cells from further viral infection the cells which are infected with virus they secrete a protein known as interferon which protects the other side by other cells from the getting the infection of the virus so this interferon protects the other non infected cells from viral infection next topic is acquired immunity that we acquire when we encounter with the pathogen it is characterized by memory it means that our body when it encounters a pathogen for the first time produces a response called primary response when a, any pathogen enters in our body our body creates antibodies for that that is our primary response when the pathogen or germ enters first time in our body the body gives some reaction that is known as primary response it is of low intensity subsequent encounters with the same pathogen elicits 
a highly intensified secondary or anamnestic response fast response when this pathogen comes to our body next time so secondary response is very strong response because already antibodies are prepared by our body this is ascribed to the fact that our body appears to have memory of the first encounter our body remembers the first encounter of the pathogen so antibodies are also present in our body so under secondary response our body gives the fast response or intense response the primary and secondary immune responses are carried out with the help of two special types of lymphocytes present in our body that is b lymphocyte and t lymphocyte b means from the bone marrow and t for the thymus the word t is from the thymus the the b lymphocytes produced an army of proteins in response to pathogens into our blood to fight with them so b lymphocytes they produce army of proteins antibodies the t lymphocytes do not secrete antibodies but help b cells to produce them t lymphocytes help the b lymphocytes to produce antibodies now the structure of antibody molecule what is the structure of antibody molecule as shown in the figure each antibody molecule has four peptide chains two small called light chains and two longer called heavy chains two heavy chains and two light chains hence an antibody is represented as h2l2 h for the heavy and l for light chain heavy chain light chain two because two are present different types of antibodies are produced in our body iga these are the different names of antibodies learn them iga igm ige and ig igg are some of them because these antibodies are found in the blood the response is also known as humoral immune response humoral word is from the blood humoral immune response when our blood gives the response this is known as humoral immune response this is one of the two types of our acquired immune response antibody mediated the second type is called cell mediated immune response or cell mediated immunity first immunity acquired immunity can be of humoral that is applied by the blood second is cell mediated immunity in which cells react to the against the antigens the t lymphocytes mediate cmi cmi means the t lymphocytes they induce cell mediated immunity very often when some human organs like heart eye kidney fail to function transplantation is the only remedy to enable the patients to live a normal life then the search began for the suitable donor why is it that the organs cannot be taken from just anybody what is it that the doctors check grafts from such just any source such as animal another pri primate or any human being cannot be made since the grafts would be rejected sooner or later tissue for the grafting for transplantation tissue matching blood group matching are essential before undertaking any graft or transplant and even after this the patient has to take immunosuppression all his lifetime when any transplantation is done then that person has to take medicine to suppress the immune system so that otherwise the cells will detect that foreign organ or tissue and damage that part the body is able to differentiate self and non self and cell mediated immune response is responsible for the graft rejection so otherwise our response system can damage the that transplant or that tissue graft grafting etc so till here only we will continue next time if you have any doubt you can ask me thank you